I'm just gonna preface this video a little bit. So this is a main scrim demo I got from one of my friends, one of my fans or whatever. Um, wanted me to review it, wanted me to give, you, give him more of a team input. So that's what I mainly focus on here. The level is main. So whenever I do main level, um, main and above usually, I mainly focus on the more team stuff, right? What the team's doing incorrectly, what mistakes the team aren't seeing versus more of open than I am is a lot more individual um, mistakes. So I usually focus on those for those levels, but main, and especially in this video, I talk a lot about um, just general things on overpass, general concepts as a whole in CSGO and just more general basic level stuff which uh, if you're in main or in advance, you'll find this video fairly helpful, I find. So take a listen, take a watch, and enjoy the video. So starting with the first round, here we got pistol. Uh, nothing too crazy in terms of buys. I don't have anything too crazy over here. Pretty, pretty standard stuff. They go for more of a default heavy pistol which isn't which isn't horrible the main thing about pistol uh, glocks against usps is you really want to just get in their face and overwhelm them it's fairly hard for the uh the, fairly hard for the cts to do well with usps if you're just overwhelming them with three or four people so as long as they do this on pistol round i'd say it's a fairly good overpass is a few different ideas for pistol round so there's no like real one good thing to do so as long as you're just overwhelming them and you're not being too obvious you're fairly good yeah it is default so doing peaks like these is kind of ballsy or is it peaking long into usp same with this that could have been easily punished so just making sure when you are showing yourself you are fairly safe or fairly fast you don't want to I don't want to just like slow peek into them, especially USPs. I miss the Heaven Smoke. Can't really scale up here. They still do. Bomb gets planted. And then in terms of post plants, this is ideal. You really want, in terms of post plants, you really just want to have like one main kill zone. So for the, the T's, that's the main kill zone. Maybe even a bit back here. But basically, making sure this guy can swing is super important right so ideally the guy here this guy gets contact right and then this guy swings and trades a kill same thing with here this guy can get to contact from that guy this guy can swing kill him right so as long that's like the main way you want to play this sort of postman here but as you see this guy's being a bit too passive so is this guy so this guy gets left on a on an island and kind of has to just win 1v1s. Luckily, he gets two. Doesn't get the third. So now I'm in a 3v1. Now your kill zone moves back, right? You don't have this guy forward. Instead of this being your kill zone, now your kill zone turns into something more like on site, right? Right? So ideally, this guy has contact. These two double up. And this guy just swings monster and peeks, right? This guy will be looking that way. This guy would probably be looking that way too. And this guy can get a fairly easy kill with the clock. Just swing up, take more 1v1s, which really isn't the way to do it. And luckily they just win their 1v1s and win the round. Second round. So main thing about second round is you have two main advantages usually, right? On both sides. So usually you have the gun advantage because you got bombed down and they're either saving or force buying. So you usually have the gun advantage. I know in this meta, sometimes you don't as a CT because T's just like force AKs or force gullows with armor. So in that case, you don't have gun advantage, but usually you do. And the second one being mostly all the time you'll have utility um, advantage unless you miss by and say these guys bought all bought AKs and they have like one flash each. So in terms of buys, this is a really good buy from sewer monsters and basically all you want to do with this is either 
hard executed site because they have no counter utility and they don't have the best gun, so they can't really do much. Or play a super, super slow default and uh, and just force their utility out and force bad peaks from them because they they know if they play on site, they can't hold against you, right? So it looks like they're going to go for a hard execute. Um, throw one smoke, nothing crazy. So the thing with water control, they didn't molly here. So now it's really, it's really a 50-50 if they're going to come in water right now. If Say if my team doesn't get mollied here, good chance you just walk in. Good chance that any pro team will just walk in, right? It's just free map control. Especially the, the CTs molly this, right here. That's a huge free map control to any really pressure, right? And usually when you want to take, uh, I'll rewind a bit here. Usually when you take water control, you want to throw a flash that pops up around there. The flash they get, let's see, did they even get a flash? They get a flash, and it kind of lands, you saw it like lands right there. It kind of lands in the middle of them, right? So now, as you can see on the sides, these guys are half blind. These guys are blind, but not as bad as, like the advantage isn't as great as it should be, right? This, these guys should be both like three or four seconds, and these guys shouldn't be blind at all. But they take damage. And now that are playing slow, right? And this is what I mean by the CTs have no real options. They have to go for these sort of peaks towards con and stuff, right? They don't have the guns, they don't have utility. So this is the type of piece you want you want to expect. And I can tell the T's weren't expecting it because this guy's just left on an island, right? Usually if you want to execute, you throw a hard execute, get the flashes here, make sure you kill this guy, because that's your only Loss condition, and then these guys just run up whichever lane they need to go, right? But it kind of gets slowed down because of that. And now you're gonna see they doesn't usually end too well for the T's here. They get out, trade decently well. Right here, you don't have to plant right here, right? You could easily plant right here. Ideally, I know Heaven's on smoke, so it's kind of a iffy thing. But as long as you put enough pressure here, it's pretty safe to plant there. They do put pressure. Oh, doesn't go for the plant. And now they're just getting tunnel vision really hard. So plants. And goes. So again, um, kill zone. I won't talk about it every round, but... These guys need to make sure that they have some sort of kill zone and trade uh, scenario happening, or at least a contact play happening. Best thing for these guys to do is they know one's here, they know one's here, they know exactly where they are. Either both play in a, towards monster, or just 2v1 one of the guys, right? I know their HP is a bit low, so maybe the 2v1 is ideal, right? Send kill, kill Dozer in because he has the lowest HP. Then him in first, and then this guy comes in, trades him, or just might play more passive and hope for a good contact play. This guy over peaks there, luckily. So basically, that's a good example, right? Like this this guy took a 50 50, lost a 50 50, and then this guy took another 50 50, and thankfully won the 50 50, right? He took a 50 50, 50 with 7 HP, so it is pretty iffy. Um, Gonna skip this round as eco, same sort of thing. Need a hard execute or slow default. They slow default and they win the round. Right? Round four, first gun round, right? So we'll see what they do here. Utility advantage, which they should know they have. CTs usually don't get utility advantage until they get a decent uh win streak going. They haven't really won anything yet, so. Don't have that. So here we go, water control. So this is what looks like to be like a water default kind of strat. So big thing here is if the CTs ever throw this molly, the T's have to respect and throw another molly. It just has to happen, right? Because they don't they don't throw a molly here, and now the CTs can just quiet lurk in here, and they'll know if they get if the T's are coming for water control because they'll smoke it, right? So you can just walk in here, post up, maybe have a guy jump spawning here. 
And now it's just a free free fight for the CTs, right? Same thing if it was vice versa, right? If the T's always molly here and the CTs don't, you don't have to waste any more utility. You can just walk straight in, pre-aimed at the either the boost or the jump spot, and then take water control like that, right? But since they don't trade mollies here, you can see it probably ends pretty poorly for them, right? This guy gets almost two of them. And all and what what did the CTs waste? They wasted absolutely nothing with the T's waste a Molly and Smoke and as well as this guy's full utility kit, right? So that's why mollying there is super important, right? And it's it's a hard you won't get the map control, but it's also a hard tell, right? If the CTs are coming for water control, they'll smoke it and they'll come through. So now you can prep yourself for when they're coming through, and vice versa. If you're a CT, they smoke that. Now this guy is this guy's ready. These two don't really know if they're in water or not. This guy knows that they're about to peek him. So that's why he has advantage in this 2v1. It's trades. Now we go back into a more of a low default. Um, kind of a waste of a nade and HG there. Kind of want to take do nades when you kind of know where they are. And you can kind of just get them low for next time you see them. And molly, there's no real reason to molly quite yet. Just because you want to save those mollies. To push him back on the site or push him off an angle, like if they're in bathroom or whatever, or connect. You want to use that molly to push him back. That way, it's you don't have to use as much utility and take as big of a risk. Like kind of waste a nade utility there, a nade and molly there. Let me kind of go into a slow default. This is the right play here. Like the CT is four v five, even though they have an op, kind of have to go for a play here, right? If they just sit on site, probably gonna get 4v2'd. Won't have that much utility to hold the site. So unless they're playing a passive setup, we'll probably see a big failure here. Last thing the T's want to do here in a 4v5 where they should have low utility is do a contact play, which sadly it looks like what they're doing here. All you want to do here is just a hard execute. Does it have to be a full site control execute, right? Like let's rewind real quick. They have a smoke, smoke, and three mollies and enough flashes. So all you can do is pretty standard, right? Smoke here, smoke here, maybe maybe do like how many smokes? They have two smokes, right? So yeah. Smoke here, smoke here, maybe double molly like this, or do a molly there, molly there, right? And now you're just you're running in, right? So smoke, smoke. Molly, Molly, and then you can double flash. You flash here, or you triple flash, flash there, flash behind pillar, and then flash front side pillar, and then you should have sight, right? But instead, kind of go a risky contact play. CT gets one, doesn't quite get the other, and now, and now the CTs are an advantage, right? So you had the the T's had an advantage there, but they just not knowing that they had the advantage, they just threw it away, not knowing how to close. The round they just threw it away. Now two v four. Only real reason, only real way you win this round is if one of these two guys catch someone pushing, would be a mistake from the CTs, or you just two v two hit a site with whatever you have and hope you win it. This guy makes a solo play, which really isn't the play because this other his other T is nowhere near to react, so loses that. 50 50, and now this guy has to save. Did he die? Nope, he's good. All right, round five. So now this is where you sort of expect. Let's see, how many do they have alive? CTs, four alive. Now you kind of expect that they'll have full utility, right? So this is where you can start defaulting, getting the utility out, figuring how they play, and whatnot. T's run in, full execute. Let's see what this execute is. So rewind a little bit. So let's go. They throw one flash, one smoke, three flashes. So yeah, I'll kind of explain. I want to see it first and I'm trying to explain it. So like, you have all this utility. Let's see what they have. 
made it basically a full bio, right? Full, 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 full partial, right? So four smokes, four mollies, and a bunch of flashes. So why save three mollies? So use one molly in your execute, as well as one smoke, right? If you kind of wasted smoke here for the molly, so you kind of had two more smokes to use. But like, why waste? Why save all that stuff, right? You're not, you don't have an elaborate post plant strat, probably, right? You just want to make sure you get on the site with as many people as you can, full HP, and that's how you usually win your post plants. Like, you don't need a bunch of utility to hold the site. As long as you have number advantage as well as uh, health advantage, you're fairly, fairly good if you're able to trade. All right, so kill zones again. Kind of a misplay. Um, see, like, usually on post plants, I'll rewind a bit, right? Usually on strats, they get different sectors, so, right? So this would be sector one. This would be sector two. And this would be sector three, okay? Boom, 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 right? So ideally a strat either has a certain amount of sectors it gets, right? So the strat they threw here, it's a two sector strat. Right, so it gets sectors one and sectors two. It doesn't get sector three, so it gets all this control. Right, the thing is, but yeah, with how many sectors you get, is that is that dictates how of you, how your post plan should be played, right? So if we have a two sector strat, so we get one and two, we shouldn't be trying to scale up into three unless we really just like clap the site or we have the utility to do so, right? So two sector strat, they run up, they they kill three guys, which is good, right? They throw utility, but they still don't have a heaven smoke. They still don't know what's here. And this guy's solo scaling up, right? So like that's kind of, that's a really risky play because if for some reason they had a four stack here or you weren't counting how many people to kill and you only killed two instead of three, they easily have a guy here. He kills this guy, can't get traded. And then now you're in a disadvantage here. So all you really do need to do for this post plant is have maybe a guy pillar, two guys short, and a guy monster. And you just make make them walk into you and don't give them any picks and pretty free post plant. Right. That's it. This guy scales a bit up a bit too much and risks the post plant. Right, and now this is where kind of risky to hunt. This guy's hunting. But if you basically hunting has to be on the same page, right? You either all go hunting, or a majority of you go hunting, or none of you go hunting, right? So I don't know who this is. Let's see. So it's Psycho. He's 1850, not even the most money. So ideally, if if this team wants to go hunting with this much money, then these two guys should be going with them, right? There's no reason to take a 50-50 while hunting and risk losing your money unless you're just straight stacked. Like if you had 10K, then you can kind of justify it. But takes a 50-50 here, right? 50-50 over here. And luckily he wins it. If he didn't, then that would have been oof of a round for next round. Next round. Let's see what we have here. More B action, but I don't really agree with. You kind of want to feel out how they're playing, because maybe this team's a super aggressive uh, A team, and now they're taking A control almost every round, wasting no utility, and now they can start they can start four stacking B, and now you don't really know that's happening, and you kind of get fucked for it. All right, I have a fake strat ish, nothing crazy. Kind of just wasting time, honestly. I don't know if they're trying to execute after this or or what, but, but yeah, like it's been four, thirty seconds, and what they could have easily done is get this control. Whether it, it sometimes it is easy getting this control, you don't waste too much utility and too much time. But sometimes this is a big fight here, right? Depending on how the CTs are playing. So you take that 
30 seconds to take that, rotate back, and now do whatever strat they want to do instead of just sitting behind a smoke and staring at it. Right? It sort of took connector control, but it'd be a lot safer if there was two guys in connector instead of three guys sitting behind a smoke right here, right? So two guys there. So maybe just do like a one one three one or something or a one two two. Just to get the small map control, see what's happening, and then rotate, right? Because you're four one up. This is kind of the time where the CD should start reacting and maybe putting some more pressure. Maybe try to change the tempo a bit, see what's working for the CTs. But instead, they don't, which misplay by them, but luckily it goes in your favor. And let's see. Let's... Now we're in a 3v5. This guy goes for a solo play. Um, again, 50 50. You don't really know what's, who's winning that. And. Weird smoke, don't know where that was supposed to go. But again, you're just trying to scale up too far, right? Like, f find where the bomb is, and then that tells you what, how many sectors you have to get, right? If you only get sector one, you can't plant the bomb, right? So you need at least two sectors to get the bomb. You don't need, you don't have to have three sectors fully cleared with map control to get the bomb down, right? Yeah, it makes your life easier, but if you're in a 3v5, that shouldn't be your game plan, right? Same thing towards A. You can break A in the, like every bomb site you can break into sectors, right? So this would be one, two, three, right? One, two, three, right? So like you only need the first sector to get the bomb down. That's why you see A as a pretty safe play if you can push the CDs all the way back. Because all you really need to do is put a let me turn the things on as you can see. Like you only need to really put a smoke here. Smoke maybe here and like a molly here, right? It's a fairly easy bomb site and then you have a good post plant. But towards B here, this guy, where is he? This guy scales up the third sector for no reason by himself, low HP. Now you kind of put this team in a shitty spot, right? Yeah, they can get bombed down, but there's no real reason to start scaling up there. Also, like, I don't know, the whole play in itself is really weird, right? They have 3v5. They still have utility to execute, right? Like I said before, like, you can execute with two smokes and a molly, right? Smoke here, smoke here, molly here. Maybe even if you have an extra molly, molly here, right? Pretty straightforward. But again, they, instead they go for this solo play. Luckily, he wins it. It is a 50-50, so who really knows what could have happened, right? Wins that. Throw a molly on the fly, and now they're kind of just going a contact play. Which the CTs already know it's, it's happening, so it's not really a contact play. It's kind of just running into them dry and stupid, right? Yeah, it overextends. Using nades just whims, whimsically. I don't know who the IGL is for this team, but IGL needs to have some sort of making sure everyone knows that they're nades and like making sure on the fly that he's able to call. This sort of stuff. Just overall, just a sloppy round, even though it's fairly free. All right, so now CTs win around. Now they can't, can't buy because it's economy. And this game is garbage. Now we see a more of a default round, more of a 1 2 2, like I said before. All right. So. Nothing too crazy. I want to see how he fakes that monster lurk. He throws monster lurk. Doesn't throw anything out, right? If if I'm a CT, I knew I threw that deep CT smoke. Only way a T's coming around that is if he flashes, right? So as a CT, I'll only be really afraid of the slurk smoke if he flashes. Right, so this guy needs to throw, I don't know, I think it's Cartoonix. Cartoonix just needs to throw a flash. He didn't have one. But then, like, that's where you get someone else to come with you. Do that fake. And then you can do, like, a 2-1-2. Two, two, two. Fake B, rotate back up. And do whatever you're doing here. So, here. 
a bit early on the connector. I'm kind of anal about this, but ideally you want... So say there's someone connected, right? Ideally you want his attention to be split between these two ways, right? You don't want him to be able to take this fight first and then turn around and take that fight because that's just giving him more chances to win. So ideally you take this map control and start peeking into that as these guys are peeking up, right? That way, if there's a guy like here, you can still just run up and trade him as he falls back. The uh, counter guy is a bit early. Killdozer can, I don't know, these two, Killdozer and whoever's long here needs to be together. And then Cortunix can watch the flank or whatever. Because he's coming from B. So here. Now we have good utility. Let's see what utility you have. Smoke, smoke, smoke. Double molly flashes, right? So now you can do a, like, a, like a fairly decent strategy. Like smoke here, smoke here, molly truck, molly back, jump up, or molly here, right? They have a decent strat you can pull. Let's see what they pull out here. Divider control. Good. Getting, the, getting full divider control and full bathroom control before you throw anything. They throw a smoke on randomly. They throw another smoke randomly. And now they're trying to scale up to the third sector, right? It's like, this is an okay strat. Smoke here, smoke, I see. Smoke here. And you just run up peeking this way. But not throwing nades at the same time, making it super obvious. And then this guy trying to scale up, this long guy trying to scale up with no utility past the sector they're trying to get. Same with this guy. Like, yeah, he went for the trade, he went for the play because it had to happen, but you still got to remember that scaling up, right? This guy's playing too aggressive. This, this is a free round 3v2. If this guy falls back here, this guy stays long, long close here, and this guy plays like bathroom here. Or even this guy moves back here towards divider and just jump spots. Super free. Right, but instead, goes for a 50-50, wins it, goes for another 50-50, starts losing it, and now it tries to go for a hero play, dies because of it, and now it just gives them more. Not a, they don't have a high chance of winning this round the CTs because they have no utility. I think it's AKs, but there's a higher chance than than this, right? 3v1, you have a higher chance of winning as a T. 2v1, now it's a bit more into the... Still favored for you, but the CTs have a bit more of a chance, right? That's other stuff you just don't want. You just don't want to do when you don't need to. If you're hundred, if you're almost a hundred percent chance of winning the round, then you really just want to stay alive and keep your your money going, right? So like that guy's able to isolate. See how close that was? Like that guy could maybe kill them and got away and save the gun. Hey, right, round eight. So pistols, so I'll, I'll say it again, but advantages you have, guns and utility, right? So play slow or hard execute a site. If you want B, you can hard execute a site. If you want to go towards A, you gotta play more slow, waste utility where they could be stacked. So wasting good utility here and here, just so they don't push up. Wasting flashes here, so they don't, so you can take long control and they can't push into you. Um, Wasting utility here and here, so you get their stack off if they're there. And if they're stacked on the site, you just do a normal execute with whatever you have left, right? And then B, you usually just can just monster pop pop out, or do a simple water control with a molly, flash or two, and then come out, and then kind of just probe if they're stacked or not. I'm just gonna throw this around quick to see what's happening. Do a slow default. This guy makes a solo play into a stack he doesn't know if it's there or not, right? Good stinked. Easily could have died there to the first guy if the first guy hit his shot, right? Now this guy's going for another solo play. Right as I know he's stacked. And same with that guy peaked a bit early solo play. So even though they win this round, it's still a lot of solo plays and easily could have gone a different way. And they still just contact play out 5v2, right? Like look how, look how low they are and look how easy, like look how bad their buys are, right? They had one Deagle and a bunch of USPs or two Deagles and a bunch of uh, Pistols, right? And then look how look how you load their uh, health is for that, right? Even though they kept five alive, 
it's still not worth risking it. So here, another mediocre buy. But the CTs, they can't really get anything going. 6-2. So here, yeah. So same thing, right? This guy, th these guys have no pressure here, right? So there's no reason for how many people, whether it be one or the two, maybe three. No real reason for them to look, be looking this way and have their attention split, right? So this guy's running into whatever there is. Dice are free. No trade potential. And now you had to think, hey, two, he saw two connector, right? So now they're probably favoring the middle of the map. Middle of the map being that, right? So now they're favoring connector, favoring water probably, simply by seeing two connector that you haven't seen before. So now what we need to think is, okay, I need to go for play, 4v5. I need to take the outside lane. Outside lanes being long and lurk out monster, right? To catch them off guard. Because you could easily, where is it? Send this one guy up. He sees two, walked out here with a flash, taking this fight, and then catch him off guard. Or even if this guy wasn't here, and they had two there, and like this this guy was up towards A, maybe like watching that or whatever, they could have stabbed in the back, got two free kills, right? But instead, almost what the reaction is, they throw the lurk smoke, which is good. Should probably actually use it this time, even though it's mollied. And they go through smoke into a side, the part of the map that they should know is favored, right? So what's going to happen? Yeah, that's what's going to happen most of the time, right? Maybe you don't even get that kill, right? Now, now these two are splitting up. These guys need to just be on each other's ass. They know they're favored in the middle of the map. So whenever they peek the middle of the map, they should be together. So this guy, these guys should be a lot closer. Like if this guy, if this guy dies right here to this guy, all right? This T dies, this guy has no way of trading, vice versa. Like if this CT peaks his T and he dies, the divider guy can't trade, right? That's how you lose two B4s. They're fairly, you, you can win these. There's a 100% chance of winning this, but not if you play stupid, right? Now they know where they're going. They throw so much utility that the CTs know there's two here, you just had to get on site and take the risk. As soon as you throw this utility, as two before, you have to know they're coming for you, right? So you have to say, hopefully there's one guy on site and we can just overwhelm him and trade him. But now, now their attention gets split. This guy gets two, uh, 2v1 and this guy gets uh, 1v1 and lost. So that's, it'd have been a lot better if they threw this utility and as like a flash is popping or as utility is popping, they wide swing like truck or whatever or whatever the angle is they don't smoke off is. All right, round 10. So by this by this stage, you should really, well, before the game starts, you should already know what your win conditions for the, each map is, right? You should know that, for example, maybe water control is your win condition. It's like, hey, if we get water control, we can fake B, fake A, we can do all sorts of things and be successful, right? So maybe that's one of your win conditions. Other win condition could be um, taking just normal mid control, right? Maybe you're really good at working off that part of the map. And so that's your win condition. So at this point, the C2 should know what the T's win condition and the T's should know what the CT's win conditions are, right? And the T's should be working towards those win conditions. So here, we saw them favor B a lot. So in my mind, if they did, if they did have wind conditions, it'd be water control would be their wind condition. If you get water control, we can use a bit more utility to get it. But once we get it, rounds free, right? Sort of like um, banana on inferno, right? For both sides of the, both both teams, usually banana is a uh, highly contested because it's so easy to work the map once you have banana control, right? Once you have banana control, you know there's probably three towards A. You can start working that side of the map, as well as. You can easily fake because the CTs don't really know what's happening, right? So that's that's a really good example of what a winning condition should look like. Here, working up. So again, like you don't need two guys here staring at either a smoke or a molly or whatever, right? You just only really need one guy. And as these guys work up, these two guys can work up the same time, right? That we sandwich them. Uh, 
guys there. Do they have any utility? Like any flashes or anything? Who is this guy? Bulldozer? Nope. Or tunics? Nope. Tarantula? Who are you? That guy, right? So you, you can molly divider from where he is. So like that's that's sort of things should happen, right? You don't you don't need to dry peek in a divider. You just use an opera there. Wherever there's an opera, you want to waste more utility and as well, or you just want to avoid him, right? You don't want to dry peek an opera, especially if he's just posted. So here, kind of over, kind of all over the place, right? I don't know what these guys are waiting for, but in their mind they have something set up. They want to go for some sort of play. Uh, this guy is just kind of lost, it seems. Didn't really do anything when he was over here. And now he's kind of just lurking up, not with his teammate. And this guy kind of has a more aggressive uh, idea of what he wants to do. So, like, no one really is on the same page here. And that's that's not the IGL's fault. It's a bit, but, like, because he can say, hey, this Remember just can play slow. We'll get water control into minute control or whatever, whatever it might be, right? But it's also, like, the general team's fault, right? Like, you need to know for each map how you're play, slow playing rounds, right? What are your main priorities for map control, right? So, for example, slow play around, three, one, one, standard default, right? So, first priority is clearing up fountain. Maybe you'll flash clear along a little bit, and then you'll take mid control, right? So, everyone's on the same page, that's what's happening. That way, this connector guy knows, hey, I have a bit of time just to post up and wait, because they're clearing fountain, clearing long a little bit, and then, then coming mid, and that's when I start working up, right? And same thing with this B guy, right? He knows once they start working up, maybe you can start probing a bit into water, throw a bit of a fake, and that sort of stuff. And just having a general idea of like what everyone's doing, or what everyone's game plan is, gives you a lot more options versus going up for a solo play long while your whole team's not even ready to throw next to you, right? It's just those sort of things. Just making sure you're on the same page and uh, having a win condition. That way you have something to work towards, which isn't... Because everyone... I was like, we just got our A favorite team or B favorite team, right? It's two sides. They just plant the bomb. They just hit that side more. Like, this would be a, a B favorite team. Like, you need to be, like, a more, not general, but, like, the mid round needs to be favorite too, right? They need to be a mid favorite team. You could be a water favorite team. You could be a long favorite team. And that way, you have something to pull more of your resources in and something to work towards as a team, right? If, if I just say, hey, we'll ask you be at, a minute right and everyone just does their own thing then like we're not really working the mid control uh, the mid uh mid round stuff and that's where you see a lot of these picks especially uh at main level this way you'll see a lot of the picks happen is the mid round because there's just so many mistakes so once you master the mid round and you have win conditions and you have ideas of what you want to do that's where you'll see your team improve so much in main so again Mediocre execute. I don't know what nades they had. Kind of came to the conclusion that this team just doesn't know nades or their IGL is not calling anything and they're just kind of throwing them on the fly. Three smokes, two mollies. You already know. Smoke here, molly here, molly here. Maybe fucking three smokes. Well, maybe molly, smoke, smoke, right? That way you can, uh, third sector strat, 3v4, kind of good. Maybe not good. I don't know. Now they kind of throw a lurk smoke without the molly and like what map control they have here right luckily this guy wins the 1v1 but now it's kind of just an iffy round right kind of just need to get bombed down to pressure these guys to move faster knocking the bomb down could easily just plant bomb here not happening still not happening still not happening And that's what kind of happens if you don't get bombed down, right? Because ideally you want to get the site control and then pressure the CTs to hurry up. Hey, you don't have all day, hurry the fuck up. We have bombed down. If you don't hurry up, bomb's going to explode, right? Versus the CTs pressuring you to hurry up where because you don't have the bomb down. They can sort of basically see the site and now you're hurried up and making mistakes, right? So if you got the bomb down there, you would have hurried up the CTs a lot and you probably would have won, uh, won that round 3v4 or whatever it was. Uh, here, we'll fast forward this one a little bit. Um, CT should be pushing water there. They don't. 
sort of a bad ice cube, bad, bad sight hold. They're taking a lot of just 1v3s and stuff. So I'd say, like, good on you for changing tempo, but, like, the CT's really fucked up that round. And even your post plants are an idea. Right? All right. Round 12, um, same thing. As I said before, got an advantage, utility advantage. We all know how to play these rounds by now because I've said it almost every round. But good, slow default into into a, just a standard execute, right? Let's see. Standard execute, standard execute. It's not happening. What the holy f what the hell? Okay. So at least they throw all their nades at the same time this time. Let's see what they throw. They throw... They throw... A smoke. They throw a molly. They throw... F two... Three smokes. And a molly. And three flashes. And another flash. Holy. This is not what I meant by making sure you use your utility. I mean more like... Just make sure your... Shit's good. And solid, right? You don't need to overcomplicate things for no reason, right? Site's pretty standard, right? The moment you start overcomplicating things, it makes the entries, makes the entries job so much harder, right? Because if you overcomplicate things, now you have what you saw three smokes right here, and what's the entry supposed to do, right? He's not smoke's not supposed to be here. Now it makes his job a lot harder, and now maybe he has to come around this way or go through a smoke or spray the smoke or whatever he wants to do, and just makes his job. A lot harder right so just keep things simple keep things as talked about in your team and should be good all right round th round 13 probably just gonna fast forward this round like two because it's got advantage utility advantage nothing else really to talk about it um see this is a better execute better still you don't really need to scale up right you can just get bombed down and be be happy with it. Even post plant, you can just chill. You don't need this aggressive of a post plant. You're just wasting bodies, basically. Uh, 14, eco. We'll skip this. And then 15. Uh, let's see what we got. Four, probably, they sort of double save, so you should know that pretty much a full buy here. Um, execute comes in. Again, they throw a two sector, uh, two sector execute. No heaven smoke, no graffiti stuff. So now they have to scale up this side. Can't really scale up anymore. They do it anyways. They scale up. Holy moly! They're creating a fourth sector. What the hell? They're really just going all for it, right? Like this is the sort of thing where you, this is where you start losing around, right? CTs maybe spread out. Like the guy here, two guys towards uh, towards heaven. Right? This guy takes a 50-50. Maybe he wins it. Maybe he loses it. And now this part's map's open and they're scaled up this way, right? Bombs haven't been planned for them. So them scaling up is really just a cocky play which really doesn't need to happen. Last thing you want to do is get cocky and start throwing rounds when you don't need to. Round 16, pistol. So pistol's pretty straightforward. Good five armor like these guys do, or you can have one utility set with a kit. And he just plays uh, the rotator roll, basically, right? And playing here is the only thing, the only way you'll really fuck this up is if you play back on site on A and play aggressive on B with not enough people, right? With three people, you can play aggressive. I'd suggest four if you really want to get into like a monster control. But three, like this is like this is here. This here is good, more passive. Play the range of the USPs. You know the C the T's only real win condition is overwhelming and speed, so if you're able to slow them down by creating the distance as well as keep the uh, keep the distance away from them, you'll have the advantages of the USPs. Um, this guy probably could have gotten on peak right here. It's a pretty safe play. He's a bunch of fallback spots, fallback too, right? So it's a pretty safe play. As soon as this guy sees nothing, this guy needs to start running. Even if they're con, got a got a boogie. Good post plants, contain them, didn't give up any kills, got one kill, it's good. Now all you need to do here is keep the distance, right? Maybe they'll make a mistake like the T's were doing last half and try to scale up when they can't, when it's not allowed, or they'll just play passive and take water control, monster control, and keep it, right? Just play it slow, nice. 
This guy's still not in position yet, so there's no reason for the CTs trying to finish this round. Like, you can easily just keep poking at him, keep prodding, get the full picture of what the T's are doing on their post plant. And then once this guy's, like, right here, then you can start uh, looking to finish the round and win the post plant, right? But now you're just taking a bunch of 1v1s. And it's kind of just, it's sloppy, but at least they get the, the round win, right? Round 17. So, same again, utility, gun advantage. If you have utility advantage as a CT, it is so easy to win this map, right? On A, you have a bunch of options, right? You can either play monster, so I'll, I'll I'll break down a, a B real quick. So you can play either play monster setup, something like something like that, or you can play some sort of setup like that, or like this, or like this. There's just a bunch of different setups that are all safe if you have utility, right? So if you're saying, say you're doing a monster setup, right? You can keep smoking short, smoke here, and probably have a guy back here which has a full utility set to help you with flop, pop flashes, right? Say you're doing something like this. Let's do, let's do something like, like this, right? So they smoke barrels. I mean, they molly barrels, you can smoke it. Or, you know, they're coming out, you can smoke right here. This guy can drop into pit, watch that. And you're just kind of watching that. And you're fairly, fairly safe. So like, once you have utility on B, it's pretty strafe. And then towards A, it's even safer. Because all you need to do is burn their utility early by either throwing... A molly here, or a smoke here, or being in a, a, a bathroom setup, and that really just burns the utility, right? If they want to play fast because they're low by, they have to wait to smoke here to, to continue that pace. That burns one of their smokes. Kind of a waste of utility here, just on the side note. I don't know. I prefer, I don't know if it's smoked or not. I prefer smoking this just in case if someone is watching it. They can't see you cross and they don't really know. So they, whenever they come out, they have to look left and right. Um, kind of a double smoke at 135 for no reason. You just want to just molly it for the reason they saved on T side. But yeah, so back towards A, lots of different things you can do. And like once you get contact, so like say you're in a, a fairly aggressive set, like maybe opera here and this guy where he is, right? Once you get in contact, it's fairly safe to fall back, right? Don't really get pressured too much, and then you can go into another setup. And you know, once you push off that, you can go into another setup, and and it just continues until you're basically into a back bank, uh, back truck setup. So all you need to do is just waste utility and make make your presence known without dying, right? So they know you're there now. Now you just gotta stay alive. This guy over peaks too much. As soon as this guy gets a kill, cool, stop, fall off, right? This is the hunt. This is the best play to do. I get. Oh shit! They're on pistols or whatever. I have. I have guns. I can kill them. Like, just don't get two tunnel vision. That's when you start. Because ideally, you want to get five alive on these rounds. Around like sixteen, round seventeen, maybe round eighteen. You want to get five. Keep five alive. That way, um, you just have better economy for the rest of the half. Right? Dying two here really, really messes you up for uh, economy. And probably one more dies here, maybe. So yeah, one more dies. Now you have two alive on round 17. Now round 18 and 19 are kind of fucked for uh, economy. Not too bad, but I know the CTs would probably like an op. They'd probably like a bit more utility on uh, two guys. So that's that. So we go into a three off spawn setup. So you usually want to go aggressive here, get the map control if you're using that much many people. Um, only reason I would go three A this early on, round, on the first gun round or the first gun round ish because I don't know what the, I don't know what the teams are buying is just to get pressure and slow them down when they turn to default. Like if you know they're a default heavy team, going aggressive early is really good because it uh forces them to go slower in their default, which in turn doesn't give them enough time to execute on site. But uh, usually three B is pretty safe, like the safest play to do. So aggressive play, yeah, it's fairly good. So this guy's solo B, his teammate died or whatever. This guy's job is just to protect sector three, right? You can't protect sector two, you can't protect sector one. 
is all main job stopping them from scaling up and abusing them if they do. So let's see if this guy does it or not. Try to go for a solo play. Like he really doesn't need to. Like this guy, like this round is one if you keep sector three and then they keep the model like uh, slow is smooth and smooth is fast, right? If this play, if they play this round super smooth and super perfect, this round's almost 100% one and it's gonna feel really clean. But instead they try to go too fast without their basics being in control. Same with this guy, way too fast. Like your teammates over here, like slow down, right? He dies and now luckily they, they got a few kills it was 4v4. Luckily this guy gets one here. This guy also gets one. So luckily they're going for one for one trades. We get against uh this guy got two. But against uh a better team, you might not have the aim advantage. So you want to make sure you can just win almost all the gunfights without having to rely on an aim advantage. All right, so he walks up. Walks into two. Good. So these two went slow. And it was it really showed off like they just the guy made a mistake and then it capitalized on it. it. Doesn't really happen until like MDL where you have to make plays. Usually, especially in main, a bit in advance depending on the team. The other team will make a lot of mistakes, and as long as you're aware of what the mistakes can be, you can just capitalize on them pretty easily. So round nineteen. Um let's see. Pistol rounds and pretty just make sure the guys are playing A, how I talked about, and make sure B, they're playing all the same sectors. What I mean by that is same sectors as before, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three. Um, making sure like majority of people are either in one, so like a monster setup, majority of people are in two, or they're playing retake and playing third sector, right? Splitting up isn't too good. So having this guy solo, yeah, this guy is when. This guy's kind of like by himself, right? They're going for a boost. This guy wants to be back in sector two or in sector one playing retake. But he's a bit too far forward. He falls back a bit, which is good, but he still could have, that five seconds that he was aggressive, could have got punished. Uh, pistols. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So again, bad sectors. If you're by yourself, you don't want to be monster set up because it's harder to get support. You're further away from your team. So playing sector two is usually a lot better if you're solo. Sector three is the best, but if you're planning out and having a rotate coming back, then sector two is usually good. Uh, a stuff on A look pretty, pretty standard, really. Even divider control and fighting for it, yeah, pretty standard. All right, do 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 do. Let's see. Let's look at the nades they throw here at the start. So they throw a deep smoke, which is good. If they talked about. So, they only throw the smoke. So, yes, CT side want to keep the utility. and don't want to waste too much utility because it's so good for post plants and so good for holding the sites. But there's a rule I have on overpass where I call it the one smoke, two molly rule, right? So, basically, molly here, molly here, and smoke here. And now you know exactly where they're going, right? If they smoke this molly right here and don't smoke the one in water, then you know they're favor towards A, not getting a water control. Now you can have one of your B guys or two of your B guys walking to water for free, right? Same thing if they smoke this and don't smoke this. Now you know that they're not favored towards A. Maybe get a lurk up long, or maybe lurk up here, and just maybe get playground control and gives you more options, right? But since they don't throw any mollies, they don't really know what the T's plan is until they see people, right? Which is sometimes a bit too late on a overpass since they you play on the bomb site. Right. Go for another cheeky boost. The first time it works, second time it doesn't. Kind of to be expected. Um, now this guy just needs to play for information, really. If he doesn't see anyone water, then he can favor towards A. If he doesn't see anyone water, then he should stay in the 2 2 setup. The only time you really jump spot and see no one want to push is if you're in a if you have five guys alive right or like if you really just are confident in your water control then you can have both guys on b go into water and play like that just to get the fast rotate towards a but doing that at 114 or 110 is a bit a bit cheeky 
keep strength line is good again sectors on b kind of iffy this guy's going a bit too aggressive again drop spots good don't, doesn't really see anyone you don't see anyone you expect two things right you either expect an a hit or you expect a monster hit so there's, these are two things that you guys should be getting ready for this guy's getting ready for a water hit and taking water control which isn't good kind of gets timing rotates back which is good if you want water that would have been real bad this guy's flash wants to be more over here because I think he threw it. Yeah, you can see it right here, right? Well, the, CD, the T's are all looking this way, while the CDs are looking this way. So it's really a T-sided flash there. It really fuck the CTs up if they're playing more on site. Uh, do, 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 do. So again, you know they don't need to go out fast. You need to wait for their water guy. He's a bit slow. They go out too early. This guy kind of baits them. He does have an op. But again, you kind of just had to wait for this rotator. Like you can't just half go out. You can't try to take the site twice with like half your guys and you go half again. You had to be all in or nothing. And not the whole team was ready to go all in, so there's no reason to go out yet. And then last round, because I'm pretty sure 22 is just a AFK round. Last round. See what they do, see if they change their nades up at all. Nope, same early nades. Tempo change though, which is good. Ideally around six and a, six and a half. This is a fairly good time to tempo change and just keep the T's on their feet. Uh, plus they were on a four spice, so this is good. Making sure these two guys are staying together and taking less as little 1v1s as you want. And same thing as like that one round where the CT's went like four connector last half. Same thing here towards here. If you're putting if you're going aggressive on the map, whether it be this, it be this this or this you want to have all your eggs in a basket especially when you're forced by like this so if you guys want to have connector control then one of the guys should just be like back here and watching it right you don't need to get into connector control same thing with water you shouldn't get into water control you should just jump spot it because all your all your eggs in a back all your eggs should be towards a so that's where you, all your utility and all your firepower should be going towards is a but this guy gets these eggs that kind of kind of got caught up in Aggressive plays, get punished. Now, since they did a great play towards A, now it's kind of going down south because the B guys went a bit too aggressive. But this play would have been perfect if that connector guy stayed up here and then they played like uh, pass one B. The only way they lose this right now is not trading or going out dry when they have nades. Right? You don't you don't know where they are, so you have to use your nades. They don't get now put this guy in a 1v2. Two 50-50s, so 25% chance he wins this round. Let's see what happens. Gets one. Goes around, gets two, wins two 50-50s. Low percent chance of that happening, but sometimes it does happen like that. And then round 22, just an AFK round, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So so yeah, that was Super Monster South versus South Jury Jackets or Jacks on a overpass and just kind of go went over some more basic stuff there nothing too complex it just that's where i find that most of these main teams lack is just understanding the basics right they have the aim they've been focusing so hard on the aim and making the individual right plays they don't really know what the team right plays and what openings they have in more of a team setting versus a plug setting so yeah if you want to see more of these um my information's in the in the in the description you can send me a demo on that and I'll might make a video about it for right now. But yeah, until next time, see you guys later.